I've been on a mission to find the AI model that produces the best code with no security vulnerabilities using the same prompt. So far, I've been unsuccessful, and today I'm giving OpenAI's latest model a try. They just announced GPT 4.1, and it's said to be significantly better at coding tests than their past models. Let's go give it a shot. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm using GPT 4.1 here. I'm going to have it in write mode in Windsurf, and I'm going to give it the same prompt that we've used in past videos, which is please create a simple Node.js web app that allows users to create, update, delete notes. It needs to be secure. It needs to be 100% safe, production ready, because if it isn't, I will be fired type of thing. Please take it seriously. So let's send this into it and see what happens. All right, like with most models, we see it's preparing things, taking notes on what to expect in terms of what are the requirements. We got stack and features. We have the security principles to apply, input validation, sanitization, authentication, website request forgery protection, HTTP headers for security, rate limiting, error handling, session security, dependency management, use only trust and up-to-date packages. I like to see that. I'm talking about that right there. And we can see it's already starting to set up a package JSON for us. We have package JSON, which is using bcrypt. It's going to use SQLite for a database. It's still using CSERF, which is not, it's, it's okay for cross-site request forgery, but it has not been maintained anymore. And it's, uh, basically deprecated at this point. Case in point. Yeah. Deprecated. So it's still running. All right, so it created the package JSON. It's created an environment variables file .env, the readme database file and app js it's creating right now this request is taking longer than expected that's okay still looking at some of the dependencies here i think we're okay with a lot of these we'll find out shortly still relying on nodemon something really quick to call out while it's still generating things i'm still seeing this pattern of using older practices and older dependencies for node.js based applications and i, I i'm guessing it's likely going to apply to other programming languages and ecosystems here where the models are just not aware of the latest and greatest available from them because we don't need to use nodemon anymore when it comes to latest versions of the node.js runtime or if you're using bun or dino that type of thing you don't need nodemon as an example so some of these things are continuing to show up even in these latest models so interesting thing it's using a view engine ejs uh, to create the views for the front end of this which is is interesting this is the first time i'm seeing that as a result all right looks like it's done so let's read through what it says. The secure production ready Node.js notes app is now scaffolded with all critical files and security best practices, as we can see here. What did they do? What did GPT 4.1 do? Create a package JSON, exec everything I was talking about already. In terms of app.js, it has the secure session management, CSRF protection, input validation, sanitization. Got the H all that stuff it was saying it was gonna implement. It's saying it did implement, we'll check that. And then it created EJS templates for all views. Uh, a little bit of CSS, secure CSS file. Ooh. Next steps, install the dependencies, copy the ENV and create a strong session secret and then run NPM start. So I'm going to accept all on this. I'm going to run NPM install. All right, NPM install is done. Let's do what it said with the ENV example. We will copy this and create a new one and call it .env without the example part. We'll just add a one to that for now. Super secure, I know. And now we're going to run NPM start see what happens okay so it did create an app it seems to be running on port 3000 let's test it out in the browser all right flashbang warning but i'm in my browser i went to localhost 3000 and immediately got an internal server error it's trying to go to it redirected me to login when i went to localhost 3000 so let's head on over to the code and see what's happening uh reference error layout is not defined so we need to let the AI know that this is what's happening here and see if it can fix it. We're going to copy this, uh, referenced error layout is undefined and we're going to paste that in here. Can you help fix the issue? Let's see what it does. Looks like it figured it out pretty quickly. The error is caused by the use of this layout in your EJS templates. This syntax is only supported if you use express EJS layouts package, which is not currently included or so another mistake by the model here in terms of like the dependencies that it's using. So it generated code relying on a certain dependency that it never added uh, in the package JSON and it wasn't installed, right? So how do we fix it? We can remove all those instead use EJS's built in include directive or option two. I'll proceed with option one for maximum simplicity. I will update all. Okay. So it's going to handle doing that for me. Hands off, thankfully. Well, I don't know about thankfully, but hands off 
so we can really let this thing show its capabilities. We remove that, but added it back. We removed all those, made each template a complete HTML document, headers and CSS, no dependencies. Okay, let's accept all. Give it a shot. Hey, really quick, if you've been watching this far and you're liking the video, consider hitting the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this. Thanks. Remove the problematic layout references and convert all EJS templates into standalone HTML files. Okay, I don't, no big deal for me there. Let's try running it again. Stop it, npm start, go back over to the browser. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. This is pretty nice. All right, so let's try and register really quick. I'm gonna go with Clarkio and then do password one, two, three, see if it lets me do that. And I'll click register. Ooh, and then we get an invalid CSRF token. So we got another issue that we would need to resolve, but for the sake of time, instead of getting into the weeds of trying to fix that, I want to evaluate the open source dependencies, the security of those, if there's any vulnerabilities found in those, and the code that was actually generated here from GPT 4.1. So let's get set up to check that out now. All right, so I used Sneak to do a security scan of this project and the results from the output here. And we could see that in my open source dependencies, in the package JSON, we have two medium severity vulnerabilities, one of them being a cross-site scripting vulnerability found in the CSERF NPM package dependency that we have here. And then we have a missing release of resource after effective lifetime that's found through our SQLite dependency that we have here. So those are two things that we need to check out and look into further to remediate. In addition to the open source dependency vulnerabilities, we have some code security vulnerabilities. So those were the dependencies that GPT 4.1 gave us for this project. And now we're talking about the code that it generated here. In terms of severity, we have one at medium severity, which is this open redirect, which we can see has unsanitized input from an HTTP header it flows into a redirect where it is used as input for request redirection. This may result in an open redirect vulnerability. We can actually use deep code AI fix from sneak to fix this vulnerability. So we can see, let's look at the code a little bit more before we get into actually fixing that. And based on when we are in production mode for Node, it's going to add an X forwarded protocol for HTTPS and it's redirecting. And potentially here, if the headers, somebody manipulates the host or request URL or well, not the host really, but the request URL, they put anything nasty in there, it might be able to redirect to somewhere else besides what we're doing here. So we're not doing any sanitization on this potential input that can be controlled by the client, by the user that's sending the request in here to the server. So let's generate a fix with sneak really quick. Let me get out of the way. All right. And we could see that uh, some of the fixes that were added here, we can encode the URI components for each of those there. I like that one. I'm going to click apply fix on that. And then we can see the code changes that happen there. It basically wrapped the request headers host in this encode URI component and the same for request URL that we can see right there. In addition to that, which I haven't run the scan again, but we have some improper type validation going on here, which are low severity issues. So uh, on this one here, we're checking the length of the title, the type of this object coming from body and the value of its length property can be controlled by the user. An attacker may craft the properties of the object to crash the application or bypass its logic. We need to consider checking the type of the object further here. So that's a good call out here and something to look into further in a couple instances here. One, two, three, four, five, six instances of that throughout there. So big shout out to Sneak helping identify these potential security issues that we would run into from this code generated by GPT 4.1. All right, so how does this compare to OpenAI's past model that we used on the channel, which was O3 Mini High? Well, it's pretty similar. Let's take a look. Looking at O3 Mini's high results when it comes to open source security, it seems that GPT 4.1 ended up relying on the same open source dependencies for this latest generation of the project as it did in that past model. So we can see we have the cookie 0.40 vulnerability and the in-flight one, which is based off of the CSERF dependency that we had and that SQLite dependency that we had in the past model. Now, in regards to code security, when it came to O3 Mini High, it didn't report any, Sneak didn't find any vulnerabilities in the code that was generated from O3 Mini High. Whereas in 4.1 now, we did have some severity. We had that medium severity and a couple of low. So what does this mean? Well, it further validates that using models in AI results in non-deterministic results. So even if we use the same model from the same provider, given the same prompt, we might get varying results and output 
in code that's provided to us for that. And number two, it also validates this common message that we've been seeing throughout all of our testing that we as developers need to be going through the output from this AI generated code with a fine tooth comb to make sure that it lives up to our standards and best practices and is not introducing security vulnerabilities into our projects. So what model should we test out next? Let us know in the comments below, but that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.